the island of Langeland in the south of Denmark. In Tranika Castle, the oldest inhabited estate in the kingdom, Count and Countess Alefeld Lauvig are preparing for their springtime celebration. A round of guests will enjoy an exquisite meal prepared in the castle kitchen, made from the finest regional and seasonal ingredients. Good day. Good day. Yeah, I am Mette Alfred Laubig. And I am Christian Alfred Laubig. Welcome to Ternica Castle. Langeland is the largest island in the Danish South Sea. The Danish kingdom is known for its delicious seafood and smorbrod, a well-topped piece of buttered bread considered a national dish. The fresh charm of Scandinavian springtime is all around the island and its castle. For centuries, it's been the symbol of Langeland Island. In June, the Count and his wife, Countess Meta, invite close friends and family to a springtime celebration. In two days, on the morning of the party, the Count will go stag hunting. Jürgen Ramosen is in charge of the hunt and will be going with him. There could be something good done in Mummerland. And then a little further up from where one can see the castle. Yes, it's uh, great done there. Have you already picked out a good stag? Yes, the plan is to get a feel for the lay of the land now. Uh, yes, so you'll probably get going around five? Yeah. Good that I don't have to get up so early. Yeah, it's already light. <laughs> Shooting stags is permitted on Langeland until mid-July. One has to make sure one hunts in the right parts of the island. The Count takes the opportunity to have a look around and make sure everything is in order on the estate. It spans over 2,300 hectares. The largest hunting areas are on the edge of a forest. Well, this is perfect because we have this long strip of forest. There are at least three stags, or at least there should be. You've already taken a look. Yeah, the wind is great too if it holds, and it probably will. Yeah, conditions couldn't be better. The Tranika estate is also used for agriculture, producing wheat and rape. The Count wants to make a cooking oil from the rapeseed and export it to Japan. Danish products are very popular in the Far East. The drive takes the men past a herd of wild horses. The Count owns 27 Exmoor ponies that help to keep the meadows trimmed. They're not accustomed to human contact and it's not easy to get close to them. Meta has a lot to do in the castle. Chef Christian Picard wants to go over the menu for dinner. For the first course, Christian suggests lobster, local lobster, of course. Christian, as a starter, I could imagine something with white asparagus. What do you suggest? Yes, I think one could make a little asparagus with some fish. Turbot, asparagus, a little butter, something crunchy, a few herbs. On account of the hunt, Meta wants to serve stag, whether it's fresh from the estate or not. This means using a cherry wine, which is made according to an old family recipe. I think it has such a deep and rich flavor. If we reduce and mix it with the meats, juices, a little butter, salt and pepper, we'll get a very deep and intense taste that will bring out the cherries and the meat. I can't wait to try it. It'll be a new experience. For dessert, they agree on ice cream with strawberries and rhubarb. Christian knows the culinary preferences of the hostess very well. 
For me, the most delicious food is fresh, seasonal produce that is prepared in just the right way. Our chef, Christian Picard, is an absolute expert. It should be delicious, yet simple. It shouldn't be too labored and too fancy. Just straightforward and tasty. That, for me, is a delicacy. The Countess is very pleased. If the menu is anything to go by, the dinner is looking to be a great success. The Ahlefelds are one of the oldest noble families in Denmark. Trenica Castle was built in the 12th century as a fortress. It's been in the ownership of the Ahlefelds since ancestor Friedrich von Ahlefeld kidnapped and eloped with the 14-year-old daughter of the owner in 1656. The new father-in-law, Imperial Count Turantzau, was left with no choice but to gift the castle as her dowry. It's been in the Ahlefeld family ever since. At the foot of the imposing castle, Christian begins to prepare the dinner in his own restaurant. The game needs to be filleted and marinated for 12 hours. Alongside olive oil and onions, the marinade contains thyme, rosemary and tarragon. Salt and five different types of pepper are also added. For inspiration, Christian is turning to a 200-year-old cookbook from Tranica, composed by the then castle chef, Christopher Jakobsen. The entire concept behind the art of Christopher Jakobsen's cooking is simplicity, ecology, and using regional produce. That's something that's seen as modern nowadays, but it was commonplace for the everyday to function. I like this basic principle of the simple kitchen, with quality and taste being the main part of the dish, rather than all the fashionable extras. Christian is also getting started with the Countess's cherry wine to make the base for the sauce. For dessert, he's preparing a soup made from rhubarb and strawberries grown on the island. Red wine, vanilla, lemon and sugar will still be added, as well as the exotic tonka beans. I use the tonka beans because they're so aromatic with strong nut and vanilla flavors that lend it a very warm and sunny taste. It will give a depth to the dish of cold rhubarb soup. The fruits need to be cooked for 20 minutes and are then put through the sieve. On the evening, ice cream will be offered with the soup, hidden in these chocolate balls. A lot of my ideas are inspired by my children. These balloons come from a wish to create a surprise. Seeing the delight on people's faces when they're served with soup and realize that there's more to the soup. The preparations for the exquisite meal are all being done in the chef's own restaurant. 200 years ago, this is where the Count's riding and carriage horses were housed. His nickname is now the name of the restaurant, The General. Before busying herself with all the preparations, Countess Meta takes some time with her horse, Polly. She's been an avid rider since she was small, and riding for the hunt is her passion. She likes to do as much stable work as she can herself. For me, all the preparations are part of the riding. It allows me to see what mood the horse is in and gives us a chance to get close to each other. For me, this is very important. So that they understand what is needed of them in as well as outside of the dressage arena, event horses like Polly have to learn, or it could get dangerous in competitions. For the Countess, the rides out on the estate are a highlight. It gives me a sense of freedom. 
galloping over the fields is my favorite me time. I can relax, block everything out, and just enjoy the moment, together with my horse. But today, there's little time for that. The lady of the castle is expected in the banqueting hall. Jeanette, the wife of chef Christian Picard, wants to lay the table. Her first rule, no dinner without underplates. Imagine you enter a room and there's nothing in front of the guests. It looks a little empty. We do it to welcome our guests to the table. Here, impeccable hospitality also means impeccable precision. The cutlery is laid so it reaches down to the golden edge. The forks too, up to the golden edging, so it fits. It has to be directly opposite, parallel to the sides and directly in front. Otherwise, it doesn't look nice and irritates the eye. It has to create an overall impression, so it always looks good when the guest is seated at the table. Hey, Jeanette, how's it going? Good. Great. I bought the serviettes down. Remember, the monogram has to go at the top. For the larger events, Countess Meta likes to make sure that the table has been laid perfectly. She comes from a noble family herself, and attention to detail is of great importance when entertaining, as is the seating order. Christian and I always sit opposite each other. We feel this is the best way to be with our guests. We arrange the seating in the following way. If someone has never been to Tanneke, we sit next to them. We try to seat guests together that have interests and experiences in common. While Jeanette is achieving her perfect symmetry, the Countess tends to the rooms of her guests. Her youngest daughter, Benedicta, is helping her. The castle's guest rooms always have something sweet and sometimes an unusual surprise. Hello. Can I come in and have a look? Does everything look good? An unconventional way to the bathroom. This is because of the large cupboard. It has always been in here and it was impossible to find a space for it and a bathroom. So I had the idea that you could go through the door to get there. The castle has 14 guest rooms and a few years ago, Countess Meta was very involved with their renovation. Interior design is a passion for the trained psychotherapist. The rooms in which Queen Mother Ingrid has stayed are not only available to private guests. Although the castle cannot be termed as a conventional hotel, as the guests stay door to door with the Arlefeld family. We enjoy having guests, of course our friends, but also those whom we don't know who come and stay here. An old house like this needs life in it, and it has that when we fill it with guests. There are fresh flowers, there are delicious smells coming from the kitchen, and all the rooms are ready. It's a good feeling. The castle has a total of 70 rooms, such as the Red Hall, with mirrors from the 19th century and photos from the 21st, some taken by the godmother of the Count, the Danish Queen Margareta II. The Chinese room has a special story. The great-grandfather of the Count was the Danish ambassador to China and Mongolia a hundred years ago. The table comes from Ulaanbaatar and was transported to Beijing by camel and then by ship to the Tranika Castle. The Svenborg Harbour on the neighbouring island of Funen. Chef Christian wants to get the turbot from fish merchant Mats. So, Christian, here we have the turbot. Yes, this is the largest. Christian secures four of the delicacies for one of the starter courses. 
He takes a lot of care when preparing them back in the kitchen. You have to be very careful when you're filleting a fish like turbot. Of course, firstly, because it's expensive, but the meat is also very valuable as it's so firm and incredibly tasty when you bake or fry it. But you have to be sure to separate as many bones as possible and get a beautiful and complete fillet. Christian wants to serve the turbot with dinkel. He's cooked the grain and is now letting it cool and dry. Only then can he roast it as planned. For the lobster first course, he's making an onion puree. The onions are cooked with salt, thyme and milk. At the finish, a touch of garlic will be added. The timing is crucial when it comes to the lobsters. Once he's removed the delicate meat, he uses the shells for the lobster essence. With some vegetables, red onion, thyme, and white wine, it cooks for at least 16 hours. Only then has the full aroma been achieved. The morning of the festive dinner has arrived. At five on the dot, the Count and the Forester Jürgen meet in the forest by the castle. Alan Madsas is joining them, one of the guests who comes to the castle several times a year, especially for the hunting events. Without hunting, nature would be out of balance here. We remove the sick animals and shoot those that have become too dominant. With the stags, it's to ensure the younger ones have a better chance of survival. Hunting is caring for nature. The wind has unexpectedly turned, so they're taking a different route than originally planned. The men are particularly watchful of an area between the meadow and the forest's edge. But whatever they saw was gone in the blink of an eye. You see the book? Oh, um, you yeah, see the book. We saw a stag and a deer, but the stag was very alert. So we think there's a larger stag a little way away. The men decide to split. There are two places where the stag they spotted could reappear. Christian heads east. Now is the time for patience. If there's a chance that a stag can just come by, you wait. Sometimes I start by sitting and waiting. Sometimes I end the hunt this way. It's exciting. What will the morning bring? Sometimes you're lucky, most often not. That's just the way it is. Back at the castle, the Countess starts her day with Birte Rasmussen. The ladies are choosing the flowers for the table decorations. Birte is a florist on Langeland and has been tending to the arrangements at Tranica for years. If we're going for colour, then this is best. Then these go well. Yes. It's nice with the leaves and we have this foliage with the lining and the accessory. Yes, that's a good idea. The round rhododendron petals are a nice contrast to the high lupins which Birte brought from her garden. Meta has also very clear expectations when it comes to the flowers. They shouldn't be too formal, more inviting and homely. Of course, always pretty and creative. That's what makes them a nice floral decoration. But they also need to look comfortable. Birte is in charge of arranging the flowers, while Meta will be receiving her first guest soon. In the kitchen, Christian is testing his cherry wine reduction, which will be added to the juices of the cooked game. It adds a fruity depth to the dish, a hint of marzipan, and gives the meat a long-lasting flavor together with the sauce.
Things have to be quick and coordinated when it comes to the dessert. The frozen chocolate balls mustn't melt. The filling made from cream, vanilla, egg, sugar, and white chocolate has to be inserted quickly and then have time to cool down. Now it's time for the butter with a hint of salt and white pepper for the turbot. Little pieces of onion have been added for more flavor and saffron for the color. Count Christian has had little luck with his stag in the forest. Jürgen and Alan have also been unsuccessful. The animal they saw through the binoculars early that morning has made itself scarce. Maybe it's down to the early warning system in the forest. The blackbirds are especially good, the songbirds too. When they go chip, 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 it's likely that there's a fox or a cat about, some animal on the ground. When they squawk, then they've seen a bird of prey or an owl that's sitting in a tree. Then they gather, the owl is usually perched close to the trunk and they fly around it and warn each other. Today, the game outsmarted the hunter. They saw the deer with her young again, but the stag they intended to shoot has disappeared. They don't bite every time. We had a nice morning, saw animals. It is what it is. We'll have to come back another time. Luckily, Christian's deer fillets are coming along nicely, and the marinade has soaked through. Now, just the finishing touches have to be made before the meat is served this evening. I'm placing it on a very, very hot iron pan because they're very tender pieces of meat, and it has to be quick for them to get the flavor of the grill, yet still be raw inside. Whilst the last preparations are being done in the kitchen, the first guests are arriving at the castle. Good friends from Copenhagen, and Christian's parents, Countess Brita and Count Preben Alfred Lauvig, are here. For a quick little snack, Christian has rustled up some salmon sandwiches with a delicious cucumber relish made from vinegar, thyme, and sea salt to round off the salmon. The salmon is cold smoked, very mild and elegant in taste, while soft in texture. The smoky taste sets off the cucumber salsa, which is slightly tart and lends it a freshness. The hard-boiled quail eggs are an eye-catcher, topped with parsley and chervil pesto. The weather on the island is holding too, so the party can enjoy the Danish snack outside. Shall we start with the toast and saying welcome? Yes, we should. Thank you for the invitation. Whilst the salmon is being enjoyed on the castle balcony, Birte Rasmussen is perfecting the decorations. So the blossoms stay fresh for a long time, she removes the leaves from the stalks. She likes the color combination, and the white porcelain blossoms complement the large ones nicely. I think it's important for the flowers to add color, for the room too. There's light and a play on the colors, especially with the chandelier in there. There's only one rule for the arrangement. It can't be too high. The guests need to be able to see each other. I think this suits the table. Pretty colors for a lovely evening. A few hours later, and the celebrations have begun. The guests are close friends and family of the Count and Countess. The lobster is being prepared in the kitchen, served with lobster essence on a bed of onion puree. Welcome to a true spring meal. Welcome. We're happy to see you. The guests are delighted with the lobster that is served on a wafer-thin black bread chip. 
Christian is making sure nothing is left to chance. The asparagus is eagerly anticipated. I can't get enough of it. So we're eating it again today. And a little turbot. The saffron butter balls melt over the warm asparagus. Everything has gone perfectly so far. Timing is key for Christian, especially serving the main course at the right moment, the deer fillets with seasonal vegetables. Now it's time for a well-deserved breather in the kitchen. The fruit soup with vanilla and tonka beans is served directly at the table. Time for self-assessment. Yes, I'm pleased. I hope the guests are too. It's their opinion that's important. The mood at the table speaks for itself. The guests are already looking forward to the springtime festivities at Tranika Castle next year.